Sean, over on the right. Giannis, um, when you first started playing basketball, did you ever think a moment like this would happen? <sighs> man, uh, no, man. No, 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 no. I started, I started playing basketball just to, you know, help, help my family, you know, um, try to get them out of the struggle, you know, the challenges we were facing when we were kids. Uh, but, man, I never thought, you know, I'm going to be 26 years old, you know, uh, with my team, playing the NBA Finals, just playing. And, like, I was just happy just being a part, like, you know, not even winning, just being a part of this, of this journey, you know. And, uh, but I never thought ever when I'll be 26, you know, I'll be sitting in this chair with this right here and this right here. Man, it's been, it's been, uh, we've come a long way. Giannis has done it. He's reached the pinnacle of success in the NBA. The accolades are vast, and just at the age of 26, Giannis has put himself in position to be the next face of the NBA. The two-time league MVP, and now finals MVP, was picked just outside of the lottery in the 2013 NBA draft. Giannis' journey to get even to get to that point was one straight out of a fiction book. Giannis was born in Athens, Greece, to two immigrant parents from Nigeria in December of 1994. At the time, his parents did not have legal status, making them essentially illegal immigrants. This alone brought up a ton of issues. Chief among them was the inability to get a stable job that paid well. And Antetokounmpo's struggled in Greece, not having food all the time, evicted from houses, and experiencing racism. The xenophobia was so vast and notorious in Greece that a group called the Golden Dawn prevented Giannis from wanting to go outside at night because they were notorious for assaults and killings of immigrants. Giannis and his brother Thanasis had to help pitch in financially, so they sold glasses and bags on the streets of Greece. Basketball was an afterthought to Giannis at this point in his life, and he was just trying to help his family survive. This all changed in 2008 as a junior basketball coach by the name of Spiros Villianis was walking through the neighborhood and saw where Giannis was playing at with his brothers. They were chasing each other around and Spiros was locked in on Giannis and he noticed his size, frame, and his agility. He approached Giannis at the Nassis and asked him to come play, play basketball with Philiathikos. The Nassis said yes, but Giannis initially said no. But by the time Giannis went to practice with the Nassis three months later, he was a tree. And the first day Giannis was at practice, he was there and ready to play, but at the start, he was pretty bad. He didn't have any skills at all, but what stood out, to, according to his teammates and his coaches, was his competitive spirit. He was just a tall, skinny kid that was athletic with no control over his body or any basketball skill. Coach Villianis put his players through endless skill work. He prepped his players to be able to play any position, making all of them learn how to dribble, pass one-handed, pass two-handed, overhead pass, how to shoot, and just to be well-rounded players that could do anything. And Giannis was so committed to working hard, he had to walk five miles to the gym with his brother to work out in the morning and in the evening. And at the time, sometimes he would sleep in the gym and he had one pair of shoes to share with his brother. Three years after Giannis started playing, at 16 years old, he was one of the top players in Greece despite playing in the second division amateur league. Playing for Philly Athikos, Giannis caught the attention of a couple scouts who were going to come see what he was about. And in April of 2013, Giannis entered his name into the NBA draft about three years after he was 16. But do you remember what I told you earlier about him not being a citizen of Greece? Yeah. He hadn't left the country and he really couldn't leave because he he would either risk deportation or he wouldn't be able to go back to Greece. So there was a period of time between April and June where they didn't know if he was going to be able to even go to the draft to possibly be drafted. But luckily, there was a lot of work done and him and Thanasis were able to become Greek citizens. So they're able to get a, they were able to get passports to be able to go out of the country. And they took advantage of this. Giannis was able to play for the U20 Greek national team in Italy and showcase his talent to more scouts. And when the time came for the draft, there was a point where he almost still didn't go. <laughs> he didn't know if his brother was going to be able to go. That was a kind of dicey thing at the time. And 
Thanasis was able to go, but the rest of his family wasn't. He was out on it. But it took a lot of convincing from his father to tell him, like, Giannis, this is a chance for you to be able to help all of us. So at that point, Giannis and Thanasis got on the plane and went to New York. And on June 27, 2013, Giannis was drafted by the Milwaukee Bucks. Once he got to the NBA, it took him a while to get comfortable and cozy. His family was still stuck in Greece, and it took him three tries to get an American visa. Once they got it, the sky was the limit for Giannis. He was now comfortable, and he was able to focus on becoming just a better basketball player. And within three years of being in the NBA, Giannis turned himself from a project to a budding star. In the 2016 season, his fourth year, he won the most improved player, making the all-star game and also being selected to his first all-NBA team. And every year since, he's gotten better steadily, and his team has accumulated more success as he grew and developed as a player. As of right now, he's had five straight All-Star games and five straight All-NBA selections. He's also accumulated four MVPs, two regular season MVPs, back-to-back, -back, an All-Star game MVP, and the pinnacle, the finals MVP. The sky's the limit still for Giannis as he continues to move forward and enters into the category of players that can try to reach that Mount Rushmore because that journey that he went through just now to get to the championship is ridiculous, right? Not being a citizen of Greece, experiencing racism, not being fortunate enough to be able to be stable financially, having to work, having to do all this other kind of stuff. The journey to get to this point is still ridiculous, right? And for him to get to this point, to get to the NBA first, have to get comfortable to be in this country and then go out there and be a better player than he was an ex like extremely better player than he was when he first got here when he first got here he was they didn't know if he could play in the nba game but eight years later for him to be able to be what he is now two-time mvp finals mvp and like i don't know man the dude is ridiculous because for him to be able to like I'm just going to keep saying it that journey is ridiculous there's a whole bunch of other stuff that that's out there that I can't confirm or things that I read it's just like bro <laughs> sleeping in the gym legitimately sleeping in the gym having holes in your shoes having to sell goods on the street like not being able to go outside at night because you're scared you're going to get attacked like it's so much stuff that he went through to get to this point and I'm pretty sure that's why he's so humble now like even when he said after they won, if he never makes it back, he's perfectly fine on how it is. Because this is a storybook. Like, his life is legitimately a storybook. Like a fairy tale. And, I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know. And throughout this playoff run, this just this playoff run, not before, not anything else. This playoff run, he averaged 30 points, 12 rebounds, 5 assists, a steal, a block a game. And in the finals iconic moments before we got to the finals in the Easter Conference finals let's go back let's go back to the to the semifinals they had to play the Nets now you might say oh there's injuries and all this other kind of stuff that is correct but every conversation has to have nuance just because there's injuries doesn't mean you still they didn't just hand in the series they still had to go out and win it and Giannis helped them deliver on that now in the Easter Conference finals it wasn't expected for the Hawks to be there, but they were a damn good team, and they beat the Sixers fair and square. It's not like they, somebody was, it, it was fair. <laughs> they beat them fair and square. Seven game series, they beat them, right? We get there. Game one, Trey Young has that, just has that game. For them to be able to come back and be able to, to even up the series, take advantage, take, take the lead in the series, and then for Giannis to get hurt, he hyperextended his knee. When it first happened, it looked, terrible it looked like he tore something but by the grace of everything he didn't tear anything he just hyperextended his knee and i've hyperextended my knee before and it didn't take me like four days to get back to be able to play <laughs> it took me a few like a few weeks to a month but still that injury going from that like two weeks ago or two to three weeks ago and today like <laughs> like that's that's ridiculous, bro. Like, let's talk about the iconic moments. The the block, right? Game was that game three? Yeah, game three. The block. 
That block is ridiculous. <laughs> the game that did that block is ridiculous, right? Because he's playing the pick and roll. He's playing in between the gap perfectly. But yet and still, the lob goes over his head. He has to turn around, make a full 360, and turn around and block the ball, right? <laughs> and then the next game, the steal and the lob. While he didn't steal the ball, he finished a lob that was probably going to be replayed forever. Like, legitimately replayed forever. It's going to be the, the like, that's going to be on the level of, like, iconic finals moments. It's going to be more iconic than that block, I'm pretty sure. But you might say the block is, like, a, it turned the series around. And after that lob, the stare at the camera, everything. And the 50-point elimination game, like, 50 in a game to win the finals. 50. We had 12 rebounds. Like 50 and 12. Five blocks. Five blocks. Five of them. And they were all big. Like five blocks. And congratulations, bro. <laughs> congratulations. This is an ode to you. I wasn't planning on doing this, but this is this is amazing. So salute to you, Giannis. I appreciate you. I appreciate you what you brought to the game. And no matter what anybody says, you're a champion and nobody can take that away from you. That's going to wrap it up for this video. Hope everybody enjoyed. Let me know what you think down below. Hit the like button if you haven't already. If you subscribe, hit the bell. If you're not subscribed, and hit the bell. And it's your boy Don. We just got cozy. Everybody have a good one. Stay cozy, my friends. Peace.